This is Neil Schneider for MTBS TV. I'm joined by Emmanuel Marquez, a CTO for Starbreeze. Yes. And Starbreeze, I take it, it makes it Star VR. Yes. And you also have the game Walking Dead. Wonderful yes. stuff here. Now, when we first met, it was actually at, at Seagraph last yes. year. It used to be with AMD, yes? Yes, I was working for AMD on a specific project for uh, Project Morpheus, running on a first time on a PC. And it was like a very cool, cool uh, experience. And now I am doing something more crazy here with Starbreeze. So clearly, you're obviously very excited about virtual reality. I mean, a big commitment to, to firm up a, a company like this. So tell us about Starbreeze. What, what do you guys do? So Starbreeze is a content creator. We are developing a game like Payday and Payday 2, a very big community and success on Steam. Uh, we are also working on The Walking Dead games and a lot of other publishing we are doing so we are basically a digital publisher we exist since 1998 so we are a very established company so yeah, walking dead that's a huge license how did how did you score that uh, we just like work with skyburn very closely and now we are developing uh, our own co-op games for uh, the walking dead so now we're looking at the star vr head mounted display as well yes. what, what can you tell us about the device so the device is, you know, I have been like in VR since 20 years. There has been a lot of reboot. I always knew it would come. When the first success happens two years ago, um, I was not totally uh, happy about what I get because I never get enough field of view. And I always have this horse view coming on. So it's like looking in a box. So something was missing. Uh, so that's why when I met uh, Lionel Anton from uh, Infinity Company in Paris, I knew it was something I wanted to work with because of the 210 degrees of field of view. So now what I build with this guy, it's actually, as Starbreeze, we control our engine, we control the medal, we control the content. We also control the hardware, no, the hand device as Project Star VR. And that's very important because we could really create the benchmark for VR because we have every element to our hand to push that as far as possible. What format works in VR, how much time you could play there, which kind of gameplay, you know? So all that, and the fact we have a 210 degrees, it's a direct immersion. So now the, the lenses are significantly different than, than lenses I've seen on other yeah, HMD devices. Can you explain how the lenses work or what's unique about them compared to the other solutions? So what's unique about the lens is that they are not round. They cover the full scope of the image and they are very close from the screen. So that's what permits actually to have no screen door, very high pixel behind. We run a 5K total pixel with two screens and the lens covers the entire screen space. 5K, uh, now 5K is uh, like 2,500 pixels per eye, like can you describe the resolution? We have two QHD screen, so that's 250, 60 by 1440 by two. So that's 5K pixel in total to drive from the GPU. What, uh, can you elaborate a little bit on the hardware driving this? Like what do you need to make this work? Uh, yeah, so of course we have top of the line machines, they are Alienware, uh, but it's from the shell. So uh, yeah, a standard machine run it. We have a very optimized engine for it. Uh, we could go higher. Imagine we go crossfire, we could go 90 frames per second easily, and we would push that to the next step. What about tracking? I mean, obviously, it's very important to have positional tracking as well as orientational tracking. Can you elaborate as to what you're doing, how it works? Yes, yeah, so uh, we tried several systems, including AR and everything. And finally, we find that uh, fiducial marker and uh, computer vision solution for tracking is actually very nice to have. So we investigate this path. And uh, nowadays, we are tracking not only the helmet, but also a gun. And it makes the gameplay very fun. And it's also easy. It's, I mean. Fiducial marker, it's an, when you get it to work, it's an easy way of setting up your different devices. So I am imagining I could also track your uh, uh, can of Coke, for example. And when you play, you could drink if I track it, you know, because I will put it for you in 3D. Now, we're, we've seen that the head mount display is one component of this. Are, are you looking at input solutions as well? Yeah, of course, we are going to continue to investigate that and see which kind of input we will give there. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, what, the first thing I noticed when I came to your exhibit at E3, and I hope I come across well, okay, by asking, saying this, is I've never seen so many wheelchairs in one place. <laughs> and maybe you can elaborate as to why that is. So, the, the exp you know, Walking Dead is a specific theme. We wanted people to feel the license. So the fact you, the, I don't want to disclose too much a story, but it's, it's really creepy at the end. So the fact you're in a wheelchair, you cannot escape the story, you get tied in. So it's, it's that. That's why we have so much wheelchair. So 
Is this no the the Walking Dead? I mean, it's, it looks like a demo at this point. But do you see this as a full release game? Like, what what can we look forward to? That's a that's a demo. It's a tech demo, but it's also a demo that let us imagine what the gameplay could be and how we could deal with a normal games and a VR side games. So our plan is to release both and have a double experience. Now, the, the the head mount display. Do you plan on like making these HMDs? Is this the future where so, you want to be an HMD company, or do you see yourself more as a content company? We are more a content company. So again, as I said, we are going to push that to uh, the VR standard we want. Probably the benchmark we are looking for. Uh, this demo is not going to stop. We are going to continue to improve it, show it every month at different events. It will come better and better, hardware and software. And when we reach a point we want, I'm pretty sure someone is going to take that somewhere. So you. Do you see yourselves as a hardware maker, or is it more experimental to show your content? Because there's other hardware it's, vendors, it's but... It's a little bit both. Uh, we have expectation for the hardware in our niche market, but on a mass market, maybe we will not go. We, I don't have a clear response on that, no. I just experiment how far we could go with that. So what, what challenges? I mean, this is a, it's no small thing that you're doing here. I mean, you've got, you're having, if memory serves, it's like a 210 degree field of view. Is it, I think it's like two 5K displays, if I heard correctly. So obviously there's a lot of pixel power going on there. Plus you got the positional tracking and so on. Can you, as, you know, speaking as a CTO, can you talk about some of the challenges that you've been working to overcome to make all this work? Yeah, well, the challenging is uh, engine-wise, you need to have the right shaders, the right power. Uh, you need to think about, our engine is completely PBR and dynamic. Uh, so there is nothing baked. Uh, so we could trick stuff in real time as we play in a helmet until it gets best. Uh, and you learn a lot about what could be done and what cannot be done. Uh, because the lightning, the way you deal with it, and you know, it's not the same way that doing an experience for, for a screen. It's totally different. So there is a challenge there. Uh, technically wise, I mean, we are good. We have good engineers here. We are able to work at the driver level. And the fact I control the wheel chain, let me do pretty amazing stuff. So I don't think there is impossible challenge. It's just we are in a learning path as everyone. That's just the reboot of VR. So now, this is Walking Dead. Are there other titles that you're working on as well? Uh, we have several titles producing internally, and we have some titles. Yes, we are gonna probably gonna put also in VR for sure. And we, we uh, I'm totally open to work with uh, Open VR from Steam and allow more people to come and play with us. You know, we have a 210 degrees of field of view. I could always play content at 110 if I want. I do the 4 by 3 16 by 9 trick, you know. <laughs> I just reduce the view. So do you see this as like an agnostic option as well? Like, I mean, obviously the, the software is designed for the Star VR a head mount, but, yeah, but do you, it's, it's, you could... We could open it, it's not a problem. So, you know, at the end, uh, it's, it's a screen. It's like a screen device, so some people will buy a 27 inch, so some will buy an 18, you know, depending on the money you have. I think we try to build the Lamborghini of VR. One more thing, I noticed these are uh, Fresnel lens, or Fresnel, I, I hear two different pronunciations, Fresnel and Fresnel. Uh, I think the English way is Fresnel, no? Okay. Yeah, the French will just say Fresnel. Okay. So, so we'll, <laughs> go, we'll, go, we'll go the English way. Yes. Can you elaborate as to why Fresnel lenses are unique compared to the other types of lenses we see on, on head mounts? If you don't have Fresnel lens, you cannot cover so large surface and uh, with so few distance. Uh, if you have a normal optic you, and you want to achieve this kind of uh, field of view, you will have like helmets of uh, 20 centimeters <laughs> deep, you know, so they will be like huge to wear, there's no way. So that's the magic part. And another thing I notice is that normally when I wear a head mount display, I have to take my glasses off or I put them on and they have to use custom lenses for, you know, what I'm using or they'll do focus. Didn't have to do any of that here. Why, why was that? Oh, that's interesting. So you didn't wear your glasses, basically? No, I, didn't. I didn't have to wear my glasses to wear okay, this head mount. Really that? Is it what you're saying? Normally, I would wear my glasses. Is there any special reason for that, or was that luck of the draw? Yeah, I think I'm really happy it works for you, because, you know, we distort two, two or three times plus your glasses, so it's supposed to work better without. But if you work with, and uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy for that. Okay, good. And one more question is software development for this. Have you Are you actively putting an SDK together for others to support it yet, or is it still a little early? As I said, we, I think we will uh, like investigate in the best SDK on, uh, on existing, so we are going to see what's happened with OpenVR and things like that. I don't want to remake the wheel. I will just input my knowledge inside, you know. We would like to actively participate to, the, to a new standard. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Very exciting stuff here. Uh, this is Neil Schneider for MTVS TV, checking out Star VR with Walking Dead. Thank you again for joining us. Back with more from E3 Expo.